A colorful Black Lives Matter street mural has become the centerpiece of an area on Capitol Hill now being called Chaz or the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. All week, the president has been focused on what's happening here in Seattle. In his latest tweet, he demanded the mayor put an end to this, quote, take over the city. At the same time, protesters took to the streets of Seattle this afternoon and there was a huge turnout during today's nearly two mile march. The group wasn't chanting, I can't breathe. Instead, they remained silent. And we begin our team coverage with the debate over that so-called autonomous zone on Capitol Hill. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jessica Janner Castro. And I'm Mark Wright. Good evening. So it's now generating national headlines and also more threats from the president. Was there any movement today? King 5's Chris Daniels visited the zone. He joins us live now. Chris, good evening. Mark, Jessica, good evening to you. Yes, that area has been transformed since a series of violent demonstrations and after Seattle police abandoned their precinct and its future is now part of a national discussion. Six city blocks. I mean, this is an American city, <laughs> you know, and it, it didn't look or feel like it. The heart of Seattle. A lot of people that are witnessing a spectacle. Now the middle of an American debate. There are a lot of people that are coming out and taking pictures and artwork and activity. The so-called Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, adjacent to the abandoned East Police Precinct, has a Black Lives Matter plaza. And while yes, there are some people here looking for trouble, others are not. By midday, the zone had more of a vibe of a street fair with families and small children walking about. We're not gonna let Seattle be occupied by anarchists. The president is threatening to intervene as the outside rhetoric builds. This is no different than ISIS taking over cities in the Middle East. I think that may be a little bit of an exaggeration, but I will say having uh, been on four combat tours to Afghanistan, I saw a lot of parallels to the shadow government that would that occurred in, in those countries. Jesse Jensen is a Republican candidate for Washington's 8th Congressional District 2 and said after visiting today, he's worried about setting precedent. What's to prevent, you know, a criminal element from coming into those cities? Uh, the, the purpose of government is to provide life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You can't do that if you are being extorted by armed gunmen. Seattle's police chief said again today she's intent on reoccupying her precinct. My goal, uh, first and foremost, is to have the officers back in the facility. Don't ever forget that this is a Black Lives Matter movement and protest. We asked JD, who is patrolling the zone, if there is any common ground. It's a book that we're all kind of partaking in and things aren't necessarily known on what's what is on the next page, but even just in the next paragraph. Until then, Chaz will stay in the center of an ever evolving complex national story. J.D. also told me today that Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin was on site and he spoke with her and he said he was glad all of that happened. However, there is no path forward for any sort of coexistence with the police department and the people that are occupying that area right now. That's the story live in Seattle. I'm Chris Daniels, King 5 News. Chris, and as we wait to see what happens next, uh, we want to clarify for viewers, the president just can't send troops into Seattle, right? There's various steps. The city would have to call for help or the governor would have to call for help. Can you clarify that? Yeah, in fact, Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin yesterday uttering a sentence I don't think a lot of us expected to ever hear in Seattle when she said that the city will not be invaded. So the city would have to ask for that help. At this point, it appears that it will take a hands-off approach, is negotiating with some of the people involved. Today, there was a, a potential step forward in handing over one of the old fire stations to one of the groups in the Central District. That was one of the demands from the protesters, but it could be several days, it looks like, before there's any sort of resolution there on Capitol Hill. And Chris, real quick, uh, the mayor yesterday calling it like a block party, but let's be clear, this is not a block party, this is not a sanctioned event, and there's no end timetable, correct? Yeah, and I, I think what we heard today as well is perhaps there's a different vibe during the day than there is during the evening. We did have a couple of people come up and give us grief for 
walking in that area, but then we had a couple of people say, hey, why don't you show what's going on here and the volunteers handing out water and burgers and why don't you see this piece of artwork? So there are a lot of people up there with good intentions, but yes, there are some troublesome elements and, and that's what I think you see the outside perspective mm -hmm. weighing in on. Yeah. All right, Chris Daniels, thank you for that report. Now to a key ruling on a police tactic. We're talking about tear gas. This afternoon, a federal judge ordered Seattle police to stop using tear gas for two weeks. Over the past couple of weeks, we've seen the gas used several times, even after the department itself said it wouldn't use it for 30 days. The local Black Lives Matters group released a statement this afternoon saying, quote, we take this victory and we keep fighting, we keep marching, we keep assembling to demand the seismic changes that are necessary to rid our justice system of institutional racism. Even without chance, this group of Black Lives Matter protesters made a powerful statement as they marched across Seattle. This may have been the largest march we've seen, but was just one piece of today's demonstrations across the state. Businesses closed and workers went on strike to show their solidarity as well. Our King 5's Kayla Lafferty has been following that demonstration today. She is joining us live now from Jefferson Park. Kayla, how's it going? Well, it's pretty calm here now. We are on the corner of Spokane and Beacon right at Jefferson Park, and they do have the road blocked off here as people are starting to exit Jefferson Park after that silent march led them here, and there were thousands. And you mentioned there uh, it felt powerful, and that's what we're hearing from a lot of these protesters that marched in that. And the Black Lives Matter Seattle of King County said that there are two purposes to the silent element of this march. The first one is to honor the lives lost. The second is to prevent the spread of COVID-19, and we saw pretty much everyone wearing masks throughout the entire march today. Organizers even handing out masks to people that didn't have them if they needed them. Now, uh, at the beginning of this event at uh uh, Judkins Park organizers said your silence speaks volumes. Now, one of the protesters that we spoke to says the silent element of this march gave it a completely different feel than any other event she's been to. And it just felt for me, it's just heart wrenching, but at the same time, I felt peaceful. I think change is already happening already ever since, you know, George Floyd passed away. So I think the change is already happening. So another interesting element of this that you guys had mentioned was the strike aspect. So the organizers asked that people who couldn't come to this silent march for whatever reason to actually not go to work and not work from home and take that action and move that in the direction of change. And something else that was interesting too is people of all ages, backgrounds were part of this march, including families with little children. So coming up in the next hour, hear from a parent about why they thought it was important to bring their child to this silent march. Live in Seattle, Kayla Lafferty, King 5 news. Kayla, thank you. Some businesses in Tacoma closed today in support of the statewide day of action. Shop owners encouraged people who could not attend the march today instead spend their day focusing on how to create social change. For example, Tacoma based Gather Juice told its customers to donate money they would normally spend at their shop to support the BLM movement. Other shops in Tacoma chose to remain open but promised to donate today's revenue to the Northwest Community Bail Fund. Well, in fact, businesses across the state were asked to shut down for the day as a show of support, but economic realities from the ongoing pandemic pose some real problems. King 5's Eric Wilkinson was in Snohomish County today as protesters rallied and businesses struggled to stand in solidarity. This rally in March here in Everett is part of a statewide day of action to call attention to the Black Lives Matter movement. Those who couldn't attend were asked to shut down their businesses in solidarity, but for some, it wasn't that simple. From the kitchen of his Everett restaurant, Avery Lewis feels the Black Lives Matter movement. I know what it's like to be, to feel your life slipping away and to know there's nothing you can do about it. Once homeless and addicted, Lewis says he fell victim to police brutality on several occasions when he lived in California. Now he runs Lou's Barbecue. Yeah. As protesters rallied outside the Snohomish County Sheriff's Office today, Lou would have loved to close his business in solidarity, but he couldn't. The statewide coronavirus shutdown threatened to destroy all that he's worked for over the past eight years. Lewis's small business is so small, he doesn't qualify for a paltry $10,000 in federal pandemic relief, a glaring example of the economic injustice he sees in this country. That's, that's pennies on the table, you know, compared to the millions and hundreds of millions that were sent 
you know, to these places that didn't even need it. And you had to think, hmm, why is that? But while Lewis couldn't close for the day, he that did close great. for the most critical part of his day. His light turned off at lunchtime. That, that is prime time. That is prime time. It'll cost him hundreds of dollars, a lot of money to a struggling small business, but Lewis says it's worth it. Because I understand, you know, I understand what the protests are about. You know, um, I understand the hurt, I understand the pain, I understand the anger. I, I understand all that. Whatever you can do, follow your heart. You know, that's follow your heart. That's the main thing I'll say to anybody out there. Here in Everett, many of the businesses we contacted today said they simply didn't know about this march or the call to shut down their businesses. They did, however, express their support for the movement. In Everett, Eric Wilkinson, King 5 News. In a new effort to be more transparent, the King County Sheriff's Office just released a use of force website on the dashboard. You can look up use of force complaints made from 2014 right up until last year. Time, day and location can be used to look up certain cases as well as the type of force the deputy used. The sheriff says the information will be updated every year. Spokane police have a similar website. Tomorrow, the wife of Seattle Seahawk K.J. Wright and her friends are organizing a march of their own to support the Black Lives Matter movement. The plan is to march across the I-90 bridge at 2 o'clock. The group is meeting at Aubrey Davis Park before the march. In his Instagram post, Wright said this is a necessary step to make the future better for our children. Well, have you seen the hashtag Loving Day being used today or know the reason today is known as Loving Day? It's all in honor of Mildred and Richard Loving. They endured a nine-year legal battle because of their marriage. They were even sentenced to a year behind bars, all because Richard was white and Mildred was black. But then on this day, 53 years ago, the Supreme Court struck down a ban on interracial marriage. In 2015, 17% of all newlyweds in the U.S. had a spouse of a different race. He is credited with stopping a car approaching demonstrators last weekend on Seattle's Capitol here, Hill. Hear from him coming up in just a moment. Also, it's a lifeline for those who lost a job or remain on furlough. Next, the Verified team looks at what impact unemployment might have if you're looking for a loan. And they're still here. Find out where another giant Asian hornet has been found.